Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to give you an overview of the microgroup minerals, their structure, their chemistry, and a classification scheme that works for most micas. Uh, micas are very common rock forming minerals. They occur in metamorphic and igneous rocks in the earth crust. Uh, you might find them as detrital minerals in sedimentary rocks. They also occur in the mantle uh, in some of their varieties. Um, the micas are sheet silicates, they form solid solutions, which means they are chemically quite variable. Uh, the micas are not only of petrogenetic importance, uh, they also have some economic value. They are used uh, in cosmetics, in paint, in drywalls. They um, might be used as insulators in electronics and uh, some of the micas, the lepidolites or polylithionite, uh, trilithionite series uh, are, are a valuable uh, source of lithium powering the green economy. We see here the uh, general structure formula of the mica group. Uh, there is an I position. Uh, which has in this structure formula one iron, one cation. On the M position, an octahedral position, there might be two to three uh, cations. And um, because of this variability, uh, this uh, position might be partially vacant. We see here the symbol for a vacancy on that M position, uh, which uh, might be one to zero cations depending on whether we have two or three metal ions on that position. Then there's a tetrahedron. Uh, in the tetrahedral uh, position, we have four ions, and then there are 10 oxygens and two hydroxyl or fluorine anions. Very commonly, this structural formula is represented in uh, a duplicated form so that we have two ions on the I position, four to six on the M position, and accordingly uh, zero to two uh, vacancies on that M position. That also then makes uh, eight cations on the tetrahedral position, 20 oxygens, and four OH or F. We see here a table that summarizes the most important end members of the, the uh, MICA group. Uh, that comes from uh, Dear Howie and Zussman's uh, handbook on rock forming minerals that uh, many of you might know. There are two principal structural varieties of uh, micas, the dioctahedral micas and the trioctahedral micas that we see here. Dioctahedral micas have in the simplified structural formula two metal ions on the M position, whereas the trioctahedral micas have on this octahedral M position three ions. This is not quite obvious from this table because this table here uses the duplicated structural formula, which makes four cations on the M position and here six cations on the uh, M position instead of two and three. We see here furthermore a subdivision in true micas and brittle micas. The brittle micas are all those micas that contain calcium on the I position. If you introduce calcium on the I position, uh, you will have to change the aluminium silica ratio for charge balance. The uh, calcium obviously is a bivalent uh, cation and uh, if you introduce a bivalent cation uh, substituting for a monovalent ion, sodium or potassium, you have to adjust the uh, ratio of silica, which is uh, quadruply charged, and the trivalent aluminium. If that happens, if you increase the ratio of aluminium and silica, the micas become more brittle. They break more easily compared to the more elastic true micas. Uh, which respond to stress by, by bending rather than breaking. So we have brittle micas here amongst the dioctahedral micas. We also have brittle micas uh, amongst the uh, trioctahedral micas here, uh, the clintonite and the margarite respectively. The substitution amongst the 
true micas here in the dioctahedral group uh, is quite obvious uh, substitution of potassium and sodium is possible on the I position on the M position a substitution of aluminium for magnesium uh, ferric iron or ferrous iron is possible if we introduce on the M position here bivalent cation species like uh, magnesium or ferrous iron uh, obviously we need to charge balance on the tetrahedron and that means a loss of aluminium on the tetrahedron and more of the quadruple charged silica similar substitutions we see uh, amongst the trioctahedral micas here we uh, do not have sodium varieties but on the m position we can substitute magnesium and iron ferrous iron in this case aluminium and lithium these substitutions here define uh, the phlogopite biotite uh, lepidolite and synvaldite seri series uh, the most important end members of the biotite series would be the phlogopite end member which is simply the magnesium end member and a iron end member which would be the anite the lithium bearing minerals uh, lepidolite synvaldite uh, they might be potential uh, lithium sources i have mentioned that on the first slide we see here the celadonite is the only variety that accommodates uh, ferric iron on the m position we see that here and uh, that is a important feature that makes the data processing uh, difficult when you obtain your own mineral analysis uh, from uh, microgroup minerals uh, you will not know exactly how much ferric and ferrous iron might be in your crystal structure but there are ways around that you can calculate that and in a different video video I will show you how to do that another variety of micas that is uh, not included here on this in this table is uh, tetraferry phlogopite uh, tetraferry phlogopite also can accommodate iron 3 but it will do so on the tetrahedral position substituting for aluminium so tetraferry phlogopite has also ferric and ferrous iron we might find ferrous iron on the m position and ferric iron on the tetrahedral position let's summarize the uh, variability of the elements that we can expect to find in microgroup minerals on the I position we find dominantly potassium we might find sodium or calcium as major elements cesium rubidium barium perhaps a few others might be abundant as trace elements on the M position we find dominantly magnesium and iron um, ferric iron less commonly than ferrous iron there might be aluminium and lithium titanium manganese zinc chromium vanadium a number of others might be minor or trace elements titanium being the most abundant of them uh, we might find high temperature micas biotite micas with uh, up to uh, five six seven weight percent of titanium oxide uh, and then it clearly would be a major element but uh, there is no defined end member no defined titanium end member in the mica group as mentioned before depending on whether we are talking about trioctahedral or dioctahedral micas the m position might be partially vacant on the tetrahedron we find most commonly silica and aluminium less commonly we will find ferric iron the anionic components are hydroxyl and uh, fluorine most commonly we see that up here two of them are part of the mica structure uh, but uh, fluorine and OH might be substituted by chlorine uh, rarely by sulfur or by additional oxygen uh, that uh, then would have to be charge balanced uh, in the crystal structure usually you can do that by iron 2 iron 3 or silica and uh, aluminium substitutions 
Here we see a comparison of the structures for dioctahedral mica, like uh, the muscovite here on the left hand side and a trioctahedral mica uh, like phlogopite on the right hand side. They have a lot in common. In only one of these uh, structural layers there is an important difference. Let's start with the purple layers that we see here on the top. They are identical on both sides. These are the silica aluminium oxygen tetrahedra. They occur in a layered geometry. This is quite obvious because the mica group are sheet silicates. They are structured uh, and in layered geometries. We find underneath this um, silica tetrahedron layer a octahedra layer. This octahedra layer is different. In the dioctahedral micas, this layer is composed of aluminium oxygen octahedra. In the trioctahedral micas, this octahedral layer is composed of magnesium oxygen octahedra or octahedra of another bivalent cation species such as ferrous iron. This octahedral layer corresponds to the M position that we see here in the structural formula and we see a variable abundance of metal ions on that layer. We come back to that in a moment. Then follows below a second tetrahedral layer with uh, silica aluminium tetrahedras, the interlayer. The interlayer is the I position, corresponds to the I position uh, that we see in the structural formula. Essentially, this would be potassium in most micas, sodium in some, calcium in some. When we compare the octahedral layers in the dioctahedral and in the trioctahedral micas, we see that in the trioctahedral micas, the entire layer is filled with octahedra, with the magnesium oxygen or iron oxygen octahedra, whereas in the dioctahedral micas we find gaps between these octahedra. We see here, for instance, between this one and that one, there is a gap. And this gap corresponds to a third of all octahedral positions. These are the vacancies on the M side that we have been uh, seeing in the structural formula all the time. So the dioctahedral micas, they have one vacancy on this position. If you compare these two and you imagine that there is a solid solution between a trioctahedral and a dioctahedral mica, you can imagine that the vacancy will be here uh, somewhere between 0 and 1. Because in pure dioctahedral micas we have a vacancy of 1 per formula unit, in trioctahedral uh, micas we have zero vacancy per formula unit. If you combine the two in a solid solution, you end up somewhere in between. Somewhere between zero and one vacancy and somewhere between two or and three M cations on the octahedral position. Here we see a classification scheme that is quite useful for uh, the true micas, it does not work for brittle micas. That means if you have a calcium bearing mica, uh, you cannot use this classification scheme, but uh, brittle micas are fairly rare. You will find um, much more commonly the true micas. And uh, Tischendorf et al. here in their publication from 2007 and in a similar paper from 1999, uh, they propose a classification scheme that is based on an XY diagram in which we are plotting the difference between the magnesium and the lithium ions in mica. Uh, that is uh, simply taking the cation uh, abundances, magnesium minus lithium, and the uh, iron total occupation of the octahedral side plus the manganese, plus the titanium, minus all the aluminium on the octahedral side. These numbers you can obtain from processed electron microprobe data, except 
the lithium. Lithium cannot be analyzed with uh, the electron microprobe. You would have to do uh, some, for instance, ICPMS, laser ICPMS analysis, if you suspect that your micas are lithium containing or lithium rich. So in order to uh, classify properly lithium containing micas, uh, you would have to make a, a larger effort than simple EDS or electron microprobe analysis. On our diagram we see here uh, resulting from these calculations magnesium minus lithium and uh, the term here that defines the y-axis uh, that different micas are plotting in different positions and the main end members and uh, plenty of minor members of the mica group are shown here as structural formulas or in uh, their plain names. Phlogopite, for instance, sits here on the right hand side, anite right on the top. Anite would be a, uh, a very iron rich um, end member. Uh, we find muscovite here at the bottom and, and all the lithium bearing micas would lie here on the left hand side of the diagram somewhere between uh, 0 and minus 2 on the x-axis. We see here one end member that is the poliolithionite uh, and uh, various other lithium bearing um, members of the mica group. Less commonly known uh, mica end members uh, plot over here the eastonite and here the siderophyllite. Tischendorf et al. have undertaken to plot uh, more than 6,000 mineral analysis of true micas into their diagram. And here in the central diagram, we see contour lines that tell us which kind of mica compositions seem to be very commonly reported in the literature and by extension might be common in nature. Obviously, muscovite is uh, a very prominent uh, member and we see that uh, most muscovite dominated micas have some component of uh, siderophyllite so a little bit of iron uh, that is uh, commonly known that muscovite might have minor iron contents phlogopite anhydride solid solutions uh, they would plot here along the tie line on the top right hand side phlogopite is uh, a very prominent uh, member of mantle derived rocks in the crust you might find more iron rich members more anhydride rich members perhaps with some siderophyllite component what we find here on the left hand side are probably mainly pegmatite bound lithium rich micas uh, that uh, are often analyzed because of the economic importance of uh, this these varieties of mica. There's one specific field in the Tischendorf diagram in which we find iron-3 celadonitic mica solid solutions and uh, we see here this diagram on the right hand side that corresponds to the rectangle outlined here on the main Tischendorf diagram. We see here uh, minerals like ferry celadonite, celadonite, uh, alumino celadonite, uh, they have in common that they have a variable abundance of ferric iron on the M position. That does not apply to all micas that might plot somewhere in this field. Uh, because you also could have a mica that is uh, purely a combination of anite and phlogopite and siderophyllite and uh, might not contain any iron 3. For such micas you would use the main diagram here in the middle. For those which contain abundant ferric iron you would use the celadonite diagram here on the right hand side provided that your data plot within this field. The axes are exactly the same. We find here on the y-axis uh, the same combination of elements that we uh, see defined here in this equation and on the x-axis we find the mg minus li contents. What I'm not covering here in this uh, presentation is uh, how to analyze and process mica compositions. Uh, the 
analytical work is usually done using electron microprobes or uh, EDS spectrometers. The data processing of the raw data that you obtain from such instruments uh, can be done using the Rockmaker software. You find some information on that in a separate video with specific regard to mica and also to, uh, to other mineral phases. If you have found this presentation useful, please like and subscribe to my channel. That might help with the search algorithms and uh, make this content more widely known. Thank you very much.